big story of the day is that the head of CNN is no longer the head of CNN. Now, you will remember, it was just about three days ago when Brian Stelter, the official propagandist for the most trusted name in news, went on national television and suggested that people are terrible for trusting Joe Rogan. Because after all, Joe Rogan has on a wide variety of guests. And those guests include people who are not approved by the administration. I mean, even the White House has come out in the last 48 hours and suggested that Spotify needs to crack down more on people like Joe Rogan, which is indeed violative of basic First Amendment principles. When the government is telling private industry to crack down on speech, that turns those private industries into agents of the government. Okay, but for Brian Stelter and CNN, the main question isn't why haven't we at CNN lost credibility? It's why do people trust Joe Rogan? And so here was Brian Stelter just three days ago, just befuddled at why people would trust Joe Rogan rather than CNN. You think about major newsrooms like CNN that have health departments and desks and operations that work hard on verified information on COVID-19. And then you have talk show stars like Joe Rogan who just wing it, who make it up as they go along. And because figures like Rogan are trusted by people that don't trust real newsrooms, we have a tension, a problem that's much bigger than Spotify, much bigger than any single platform, Kate. But that's what is the heart of this right now. My man, why wouldn't people trust CNN? I mean, they're so trustworthy. All they do all day is fact checking. All they do all day long is objectivity. All they do all day long is uncover the muck and grime of everyday politics and expose it to public view, sunlight being the best disinfectant. Unless, of course, you're at the top level of CNN and you're stooping your top deputy. And as it turns out, your top deputy also worked for Andrew Cuomo because that's exactly what happened. So yesterday, Jeff Zucker abruptly stepped down from his post at the top of CNN, according to The New York Times. Jeff Zucker resigned on Wednesday as president of CNN, departing one of the most powerful positions in American media after acknowledging he had failed to disclose a romantic relationship with another senior executive at the network. The sudden end of Mr. Zucker's nine-year tenure stunned his newsroom and threw CNN's future into flux at a crucial moment. The network was about to introduce a high-stakes streaming service, and its parent company, Warner Media, is on the verge of being acquired by Discovery, Inc., Mr. Zucker, 56, wrote in a memo on Wednesday, his relationship had come up during an internal investigation into the conduct of Chris Cuomo, the CNN anchor who was fired in December over his involvement in the political affairs of his brother, former Governor Andrew Cuomo of New York. Zucker wrote, I was asked about a consensual relationship with my closest colleague, someone I've worked with for more than 20 years. I acknowledge the relationship evolved in recent years. I was required to disclose it when it began, but I didn't. I was wrong. He was referring to Allison Gallist, CNN's executive vice president and one of the network's highest ranking leaders who said on Wednesday she would keep her job at CNN. She wasn't going to go anywhere because after all, when corruption goes all the way to the top, the only person who needs to lose his job is Zucker, not Gallist, who was sleeping with Zucker. She said, Jeff and I have been close friends and professional partners for over 20 years. Recently, our relationship changed during COVID. I regret we didn't disclose it at the right time. Both Zucker and Gallist are divorced. I believe they both got divorced in 2018, but they had this very weird living arrangement going back decades, apparently, where the two families lived like one above another in in the same apartment building. It was commented on by Katie Couric in her autobiography. Zucker is also leaving his role as Warner Media's chairman of news and sports. In keeping with a career at the center of the news industry, Mr. Zucker's exit on Wednesday was entwined with another dramatic storyline, according to the New York Times, the downfall of the once powerful Cuomo brothers. So what exactly happened here? Apparently, it was the biggest open secret in news that Jeff Zucker has been nailing Alison Gallus. Like, this is not a giant secret in the news industry. Megyn Kelly said this yesterday. She says, everybody has known for a very, very long time about the relationship between these two. And as I mentioned, there was overt talk about this in Katie Couric's autobiography. autobiography. Like, in in her autobiography, she openly describes the sort of bizarre relationship between Katie Couric and Jeff Zucker. Here's her autobiography. Quote, it was a little weird. With the Today Show, I just kind of came on and people responded. Here, there was product testing. It didn't feel organic. She's talking about when she was given nightly news. At a certain point, Jeff made a huge push to bring on Allison Gallist. When we worked together at NBC, she and Jeff cooked up ever bolder ways to draw attention to today and later to Jeff himself when he moved to entertainment. They were joined at the hip. The problem was we'd already hired a PR person for the show that really wasn't a role for Allison. Jeff asked me to meet with her anyway. One weekend when I was out in the Hamptons, I went over to her house and told her what I'd already told Jeff that we had the communications piece of it covered and there just wasn't a job there. What we needed were talented producers. ABC was paying Jeff and me a ton of money. I was also an EP of the show. My name was on it. I felt a certain responsibility to spend the money wisely and have some real agency in the decision-making. I had to wonder why Jeff was angling so hard to bring Allison on board. She and her husband and kids had moved into the apartment right above Jeff and Karen's. Everyone who heard about the cozy arrangement thought it was super strange. 
By that point, Karen had become a close friend. It made me really uncomfortable. And then she continues that when Jeff Zucker got fired, she says that Jeff Zucker got fired. And then Zucker asked Couric to call up Jeff Bukes, who was the CEO of Time Warner, and put in a good word at CNN. Apparently, Zucker said to Katie Couric, this is my last chance to have a big job like this. And of course, if you want it, there will be a job for you too. In those eight seconds, while he waited for my answer, says Katie Couric, our time together flashed before my eyes. The excitement and fun, the teamwork, the unstoppable ascent. Yes, he'd been a huge disappointment. But in spite of everything, we'd been through so much together. I also knew the news had always been his sweet spot and CNN would be a much better fit. Of course I would, I told him. On November 29th, Jeff was named president of CNN. His first hire, Allison Gallist. Okay, so this has been a, a not particularly closed secret in the media industry for a long time. And the question is why this matters. And the answer is because Alison Gallo's relationship with Andrew Cuomo is one of the reasons why Chris Cuomo ended up being fired. Apparently, according to Eric Wemple of the Washington Post, Chris Cuomo suggests that all of the bizarre segments that they had in 2020 when CNN was attempting to prop up Andrew Cuomo as the greatest governor in America, while he simultaneously shoved COVID positive elderly people back in nursing homes, killing thousands of them and then covering it up by saying that they were dying in the hospitals, not in the nursing homes. CNN was having these nightly Smothers Brothers routines where Chris would go on air and he would do jokes with Andrew Cuomo. And Andrew Cuomo was feted as the greatest politician since Winston Churchill. He was just an incredible leader in a time of great trauma and tragedy. So the question is, how are those segments getting on the air? Right, this is Chris's point. He's saying, you fired me for helping out my brother while I was on air talking with my brother. But you guys had to approve all those segments. And it turns out not only, according to Eric Wemple, did you approve those segments, he solicited those segments. Apparently, the Cuomo team, Andrew Cuomo's team, started getting a little bit perturbed by how often CNN wanted to have him on. And so apparently, Allison Gallus, who had once been Andrew Cuomo's comms director, called up the team for Andrew Cuomo, again, this is according to Eric Wemple, and basically convinced him he needed to come on air at CNN. So Chris Cuomo, who got fired for his relationship with his brother on air and off air, he got fired over that. Now he is suing. And because he is suing, he wants all sorts of discovery on exactly who at CNN was involved in putting those segments on the air. Well, in the course of this, it came up that both Jeff Zucker and Alison Gallus had been reaching out to Team Andrew Cuomo in the middle of all of this, which just shows you how perverse all of this is. It's personally incestuous. It's politically incestuous. All of these people hang out with each other all the time. They're best friends with one another. It is all insider driven. I mean, by the way, this is one of the reasons why CNN covered Trump the way that it did in 2015, 2016. I mean, Jeff Zucker was very open about this. It was Jeff Zucker who put Donald Trump on air for The Apprentice in the first place. And that's all these people know one another. According to The New York Times, Chris Cuomo has fiercely contested the terms of his departure from CNN, which has refused to pay the anchor severance or honor the remainder of his current contract, saying he engaged in unethical conduct. Mr. Cuomo has retained the powerful Hollywood litigator Brian Friedman. In discussions with Warner Media lawyers, Mr. Cuomo's legal team raised the subject of Zucker's relationship with Gallist, according to two people briefed on the matter who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss private conversations. Early last week, both Zucker and Gallist were asked about their relationship by lawyers from Cravath, Swain, and Moore, a law firm that Warner Media had retained to investigate Cuomo's tenure at the network. Cravath is one of the most Tony law firms in New York. Lawyers from Cravath were interviewing CNN officials broadly about Mr. Cuomo's tenure and the events that led to his termination in part because CNN executives believed the dispute could eventually lead to litigation, according to the two people who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss company business. Mr. Cuomo's lawyers sent a letter asking CNN to preserve messages between Zucker, Gallist, Cuomo, and Cuomo's staff. Among other matters, days before Cuomo's firing, CNN had been informed of an accusation of sexual misconduct against the anchor by a former junior colleague at another network. Chris Cuomo has denied that accusation. Warner Media's chief executive, Jason Killar, spoke with Zucker after the interviews and informed the CNN president he could not remain at the company. Zucker offered to stay on for a transition period as the network found a new leader, but Killar rejected that suggestion, one of the people said. Apparently, Zucker has been absent from his usual editorial calls in recent days, but even some of his closest confidants had no idea he was on the verge of an exit. In the CNN newsroom, Zucker commands fierce loyalty. Well, that's because CNN doesn't do news anymore. CNN has really not done news since Zucker entered the picture. He basically hired a bunch of, kind of bizarre lapdog opinion hosts to host his nightly news, from Don Lemon to Chris Cuomo to Brandon Keeler to, to the, the, I mean, this is, this is what they do at CNN. CNN is MSNBC masquerading as the most trusted name in news. Well, many of the anchors were very upset about this. Many of the anchors were, were, were quite perturbed. 
Alison Camerata, for example, she came out yesterday and she defended Jeff Zucker and said, I don't see why he should be fired just because he was stooping one of the top executives at the company. I mean, that's personal business. Yeah, until you guys start actually using that personal business as an excuse to have an incestuous relationship with the people that you cover, which is exactly what was happening here. Here's Alison Camerata. This is an incredible loss. It's an incredible loss. Jeff is a remarkable person and an incredible leader. He has this uncanny ability to make, I think, every one of us feel special and valuable in our own way, even though he is managing an international news organization of thousands of people. I Mm. just know that he had this unique ability to make us feel special. And I don't think that that comes around all the time. And I think, again, it's an incredible loss. And I just think it's so regrettable how it happened. If, if what you're reporting mm. is true, these are two consenting adults who are both executives. Mm. That, that they can't have a private relationship um, feels wrong. Okay, you know what actually feels wrong? It feels wrong that it seems as though Zucker was basically keeping Gallus along with him throughout his entire career, according to Katie Couric's autobiography, and also according to pretty much everybody else in media, Megan Kelly, who knows all the players. She she said yesterday, Zucker's relationship with Gallus went on for years. What he did to keep her near him as he kept advancing her up the line will be even more stunning to the CNN newsroom. Gallus, of course, is keeping her job. And uh, and as far as the the claim that these two started stooping recently, Megyn Kelly said, yeah, that's not going to hold up. That's not even going to come close to holding up. <laughs> that is just not real. And by the way, it is also worth noting here, as pointed out by some commentators over at Twitter, this is correct, that Radar Online originally broke this story. So Radar Online, a month ago, printed a photo of Gallist and Zucker together at a public event. And the day before that broke, the day before it broke, Brian Stelter wrote in his newsletter a hit piece on Radar Online, talking about how Radar Online was totally untrustworthy literally 24 hours before the story broke about Zucker and Gallist. So if it turns out that Stelter was sort of informed by the top levels, you got to attack Radar Online because they're about to uncover something we don't really want uncovered. Things start to get uncomfortable for Brian Stelter, which of course would not be a shock at all. At all, at all, at all. So that is the, t- why would, but, but, but why? Why would people not trust CNN? Why, why are they trusting Joe Rogan? Oh, I don't know. You have Chris Cuomo, who apparently was sexually harassing people while he was covering his brother, who was also sexually harassing people. And um, and also his brother was killing old people. And Chris was interviewing him on air about that. Meanwhile, you have Jeffrey Tubin, who's jacking off on the ca- on camera in front of all of his colleagues. And he's still the legal analyst over at CNN. Also, you have Don Lemon, who was currently enmeshed in a lawsuit with another guy who suggested that he was sexually harassing him. Also, you have Jeff Zucker, who was nailing one of his top associates who he had dragged along with him his entire career and was also using as a go-between with Andrew Cuomo. Also, you have producers at CNN who are engaged in apparently pedophilia. So uh, why? why? What? I, I don't understand. It's a mystery wrapped in an enigma, wrapped in a riddle. Who knows why people don't trust CNN? How could it be? Now, again, a big company like CNN, you're going to get employees who do bad things. That does happen, of course. But when every top person at the network seems to be embroiled in some sort of sexual imbroglio and or news coverage failing, you have to start asking some questions as to whether the rot starts from the head down, whether this entire fish is rotten. Apparently, all of these CNN hosts were in absolute shock and dismay because they were all personally hired by Jeff Zucker. Oliver Darcy tweeted out, staffers inside CNN are in absolute shock right now. Employees of the company learned of Zucker's sudden departure all at once via a company-wide email that went out just after 11 a.m. Brian Stelter, for his part, tweeted, Jeff Zucker just announced his resignation to a stunned CNN. I mean, I don't know why you're so stunned. I mean, it was pretty obvious that this was an investigation that had been going on internally at CNN for quite some time, ever since Chris... But you guys had no problem with Chris Cuomo covering Andrew the entire 2020. The, 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 The poetic justice of this is just amazing to watch. You guys spent a year propping up the worst governor in America, Andrew Cuomo, as the best governor in America, while simultaneously attacking both Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis as mass killers. You took Andrew Cuomo, you put him on the air with his brother. They spent the entire year patting each other on the back, giving each other noogies on air. This was all arranged by the heads of your network, Jeff Zucker and Gallus and Allison Gallus, who were sleeping together and who both had histories of being very close with the Cuomos. Then when things got ugly, you took Chris Cuomo and you chopped off his head. And Chris Cuomo, who is not a 
shrinking violet. He immediately came back at you with a lawsuit that exposes that you are sleeping together and also were involved in this whole debacle from the very beginning. Meanwhile, the only people who are still standing are like Ron DeSantis in Florida because Andrew Cuomo is out on his ass as governor because he couldn't keep his hands off ass, as it turns out. So the poetic justice of all this is just wonderful. I, you ha, you ha, first of all, what this it exposes that Andrew Cuomo is political herpes. He's the gift that keeps on giving. He infects all the people around him, and then they have outbreaks of Andrew Cuomo every so often, debilitating outbreaks of Andrew Cuomo, and it completely destroys them. So don't get too close to Andrew Cuomo, gang, and this won't happen to you. But beyond that, the pure exposure of what CNN is from the top levels down, a corrupt organization that works hand in glove with its favorite political players, while simultaneously bashing places like Fox for being too close with Trump. Let's be real about this. CNN is not a news organization. CNN is an organization that has some news people at it, but overall, it is an entertainment organization in which the personal connections of the people at the top levels were being used in order to propagate particular political narratives. The greatest in-kind contribution in the media to Democrats happens every day, not even from MSNBC, which is pretty open about its bias, but from CNN, which pretends that Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon and Allison Camerata and Brian Stelter and all the rest of this crew are all objective news sources, which, of course, they are not. Casey Hunt, who's one of the reporters over there, she says, Jeff Zucker's support has meant the world to me both at work and in life. When I was suddenly faced with my biggest ever personal challenge, getting a brain tumor, I'm so proud of what we've built. CNN Plus under Jeff's leadership, I can't wait to share it with you. Alison Camerato, she spoke to the Washington Post. She said, Jeff is a remarkable person and boss. He has a way of making everyone at CNN feel valuable and special. I will miss his guidance and compassion in this challenging news climate more than words can say. Don Lemon said, I am devastated. I just think so highly of Jeff. He's the best boss we've ever had. One of the best things that has ever happened to CNN. Uh, that is a debatable question as to whether he's one of the best things that has ever happened to CNN. CNN has lower ratings than wallpaper. CNN is the, is the watching the grass grow of news. The individuals who are devastated at CNN losing Jeff Zucker are probably also the same individuals who watch CNN because their ratings are not even chartable. You need a microscope to find CNN's ratings. Don Lemon said there are probably going to be a lot of nervous people at CNN because Jeff is really the glue there. Yeah, from their mouth to God's ears. Mary Catherine Ham, she said, I'm neither stunned nor in the know. Delighted to add the tales of yet another colleague public figure's errant member to list of things about which I'm called to opine publicly or clarify knowledge. None. Really didn't realize the old career would have so much of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, on, I'm, I'm with Mary Catherine here. But again, it just demonstrates the incestuous nature of the modern media. The battle for the culture is heating up. We here at The Daily Wire are making some big moves. So be sure to like, subscribe, ring that bell, because you're not going to want to miss a single moment.